Hey, Louise, how are you? Oh, fantastic. Good to see you, David. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been too long. So yes. we're on camera and we're just yes. hanging out and we're going to get into some deep issues and, and glean from your knowledge and hopefully help each other. Um, but we're going to have people kind of just chiming in and learning and growing and just hanging out with us. So what have you been up to these days? It's been way too long since we last spoke. Well, it has. The big news in my life is I finally had an operation on my throat after two and a half years of struggling to speak, of having to think about every sound and every formation of my mouth to be able to get sound out. I have had this throat operation and it's been a huge success. I'm so excited. Amen. Amen. If you're going to ask what did they do? Like what was wrong and what did they do? Yeah, well, look, in 2019, I got pretty sick. And of course, in great timing for that pandemic. So I had nine months where I just couldn't make any sound at all. It was just unbelievable. So part of my throat collapsed. And when that happens, the vocal folds can't vibrate properly. <gasps> you yes. are not going to believe this. No, what? Dr. William Montgomery. Did you have it where they were almost paralyzed and this device yes. made it where they vibrate again? I, or, or I did have, I had a bit of that, but it was also tense. It was called muscle tension dysphonia. And it was related to a situation I had with my hands when my arms couldn't move for three years back in my late twenties. And I had MRIs and all sorts of stuff. So it's all interconnected. But the operation itself was they injected filler into the little muscle beside my vocal folds to plump it back up so that the vocal folds would meet again because they weren't coming together and without them coming together you can't get sound so how cool is that thank goodness for modern medicine <laughs> yes and what's really crazy is i'm almost positive there's dr william montgomery he oh. passed away now at a mass general mass ioneer in boston and he was the head of harvard medical school and when I was in my, when I was 18, they found a tumor in me and then I, it grew back, it removed, it grew back, it had radiation, all this good stuff. But I remember when we were like, when I was talking to him, he said how he made this thing where if your vocal cords are paralyzed or don't work, they start working again. So I wonder if that oh my is associated or related or, but yeah, it probably it is. Yeah, yes. yeah. Like I did so much speech therapy. I still am. I'm doing so much speech therapy. Do you know what what is a funny byproduct though? Because you know it's so important to find humor in everything. Yeah. <laughs> so for two and a half years, I have had to think very, very carefully about the words that I'm making and the sounds that I'm making and, and how to actually enunciate and articulate. So everything has been premeditated. And that has meant that I've been the spirit of tact. I've been quite amazing. So <laughs> I haven't put my foot in it. I haven't embarrassed myself. I haven't, you know, done anything wrong here at all with my, with, with my vocal capacity. And now I've had some sort of rebound effect where I'm just putting my foot in it left, right and center and being tactless <laughs> and just not even thinking before I speak because it's such a pleasure. So yeah, be prepared, David. Um, today is the day you may very well find that, um, yeah, you've got a different beast that you're interviewing today. <laughs> hey, well, that's fantastic. We can handle that. Now, some of the listeners are new to this podcast and they haven't checked out the Remarkable Peel podcast with you and Chris. So just give a quick summary of who is Louise. Like, what? who are you as a person? What do you do for a career? Sure. So Louise Bedford, I'm the founder of tradinggame.com.au. I'm a best-selling author of five books on the share market. And I've been running our mentor program where we teach people to trade the share market since the year 2000. So 22 years. And because it's a repeat for free course, we've got a beautiful community of people who we really care for and they really care for us learning new trading tech techniques, tactics as we go along and looking after our new people as they come on board too. My business partner is Chris Tate, um, huge bald man. 
I used to work on the stock exchange floor when we had a floor here and he was a broker way back when. He's also an immunologist and it has been quite interesting hearing his scientific views being translated into how to make money out of the share market. So we've been friends for so many years. So running this business together with my friend um, has just been a blessing and my husband is involved as well um you saw him adjusting the lights just then just to make sure we get a picture perfect look here and both of them are called chris so <laughs> it's really easy if i want to actually get their attention because yeah. i can just say the one word yeah and that makes it easy right that's, that's awesome so talk yeah. about what um you know this is today is like the 14th of april actually 15th of april your time zone yeah um, so what's going on in the world last time we talked australia was really locked down and it yeah. was putting stress and depression in a lot of people what's the environment like because you know in america even regions of america are so different with how yeah. the world is within our own country so what are things in australia right now where you're at what are you seeing with covid just daily life and how does it affect trading yeah, well, look, I think everybody's out and about again. We're not locked down anymore, but we've got a group of people, which I would say I'm guessing would be roughly 20% that are terrified, absolutely extreme terrified levels. And it's people who have had health conditions, um, people who have known people who've had health conditions. And I think there is a certain blackness that is still in the whole populace, especially in Melbourne. We are the, <laughs> the queen and king of the most locked down city in the world, Melbourne, where I come from, where I live now. So that isn't pleasant. Um, it was really two years where we only had let out days. We didn't really have lockdowns. It was just one permanent lockdown. It was like, hey, we get to go out for a little bit and then you're locked down again. Um, there was one patch there where we were allowed out for nine days and then we were right back in it. So during that time, I think a lot of people had to face a lot of demons that whole idea with Jungian psychology that that which you seek to deny you in power, I think mm. we have seen a lot of. A lot of people covered up their emotional pain with going out too much and drinking too much and all of the vices that we know about. And when we are face to face with that, when we don't have reprieve to keep busy, we're stuck in our own homes, that actually can sink into a very dark place for a lot of people. So I, I would guess 20% of people are still in that dark place. And the rest are going out like there was no tomorrow. I went out last night with my family. I've got two gorgeous children fantastic husband we went out to a comedy show and laughed our heads off those people there laughing with us were totally free and easy and happy to be out but i can bet that they've got counterparts at home <laughs> shuddering yeah yeah it's crazy and now you made a point how you are in the most locked down area of the world that's known with everything that's going on with covid do people believe that masks work are they like are they like convinced because yeah. i mean there's so many things that i don't care who you are or what side you're on politically two plus two is four and in America, they're telling everybody, oh, wear a shirt on your face or wear a mask. It, there's no scientific proof of that. I mean, if you had an N95 mask and it was properly fit and you had no facial hair and you wore it one use and threw it away, yeah, that might actually stop a little bit. But for what people are wearing on a daily basis, they're probably getting more colds and viruses using it over and over and over again. That's like what I'm seeing within America. So what's the temperature like in Australia? I think it's very different in different areas. We were masked up to the max. It was like we all had muzzles on. Even walking out in the street, if you weren't wearing a mask and you were completely alone, the police would pull you over. I was pulled over by the police twice. It was 
terrifying because at that stage, especially the first one, I had no sound. I couldn't speak at all mm. at that time. And I actually thought there was a rapist behind me because they hurled themselves around in front of me with sirens blaring. And I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? So it was very much um, a police presence here. In terms of masks, I think because Melbourne especially, we were muzzled so badly, there has been a reaction against it now. And people are just going, well, I'll do whatever the hell I want. So in retail stores, it, it's supposed to be, I think, if you're front facing the public, you're supposed to wear a mask as a part of your job. So yeah. generally we see that, we are generally seeing a lot of people in retail wearing masks and of course in hospitals, um, if there's lack of social distancing, there's masks um, recommended. But I think there has definitely been, as soon as we could take off the masks, we all ripped them off and threw them down the drain. It was yeah. just such a an overreaction here. The government, um, of course, Politically, wherever anybody stands, I'm fine with that. But from from a lot of Melbourneites perspectives, the government was very heavy handed and the police were very heavy handed. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was partially for our own protection, but then partially an ego trip from the government. Who really knows what the truth was? So I'm just glad that we can move about without masks on outside, at least, and be a lot more free. Yeah. Now, how did all this your world, your specialty, your expertise, which you're a master at is just the financial sector. So how did all this COVID in the last couple of years affect the daily in and out of what you do? And where are you guys seeing opportunity now? Yeah, yeah, look, we do look after clients in quite a unique way because we've known so many of our clients for so many years. We get involved with them in perhaps an area that you wouldn't usually go into with clients. So we hear about their children, we hear about their parents, we hear about their relationships. I've got a strong psychology background, having degrees in psychology and business, and I am fascinated by people. I love hearing what makes people tick. So I think a lot of our clients were shell-shocked and it was a time of let's batten down the hatches. Let's try and make ourselves feel safe by controlling the things that we can control. So a lot of people went into their shell and that is never good for the stock market. So we saw that really steep drop and then quite a solid V reversal incline after that steep decline. That shocks a lot of the amateurs out of the market because it is such a sudden occurrence. So wherever there's fear with the markets, it tends to be a negative thing. So confidence tends to expand us and we tend to throw money around when we're confident, whereas when we're fearful, we hang on to money and we, we shrink. Mm -hmm. That's what was happening in the market. So now that we've got some level of normality, I mean, I know we have a war going on also, which has been another form of fear, which has also shrunk things back again. But I think we're getting back more onto an even keel. I have to say, though, is this is the first time that I have ever had to say to my clients en masse where many people were writing to me about terrible situations i actually had an email set up to say about suicide prevention hotlines counseling hotlines i had it ready made so that i had some resources to provide for my people i've never done that at all ever so i've been in business since the mid 1990s and I've never had to have that level of the, here's what you need to do as your next step to refer people away to professionals yeah it's just been a giant whammy and I'm not an expert in economics but I can do some math and I'm definitely not observing every nation of the world and looking at their economy but I don't think there's any country that's really thriving at this point yeah. and it's um people are losing their wealth and their their you know future nest egg 60 percent in a night i mean it's it's been insane and um mm. with this so what are you advising your clients so you know the australian market's different slightly than the american market but there's a lot of similarities so what are you advising people to do 
I think wherever there is strong emotion, there is opportunity. So we need to somewhat temper down those extreme emotions within ourselves so that we can look at what's happening in the world. So that objectivity, I think, is so important, whether you're trading or whether you're just trying to get through life. So one of the key techniques that I've been really focusing on with my traders is using an archetype. That is the picture perfect trade, the trade that can do no wrong, the chart of that trade where it goes sideways up, sideways up, sideways, and then a couple of shocks, but then continues on its merry way, getting that marriage material type of archetype really, really clear and not taking any new trade unless it matches that archetype perfectly. Now that really has been such a tool to increase the objectivity, to decrease your own emotions, because you're just trying to pattern detect, you're trying to match patterns. And that's fun. That's something you can do in primary school. It's getting back to matching colors, you know, red <laughs> means money's coming out of the share market, green means money's flowing into the share market, and particularly that trade. So trying to add a bit of fun, trying to make sure that you're looking after your own resources. So making sure you get enough sleep, watching your diet, making sure you don't have too much alcohol, doing the very basics so that you can thrive. And it might even mean being a little bit bored for a while, breaking things down so that you're very systematized and structured and formulaic about how you live your life and how you go about trading. Often you can't make a lot of money in the share market until you're self until within your very core, until you're stable. So working on your own stability so that you can pattern detect and make money, I think is the name of the game right now. Yeah, and three quick things. Number one, I'm smiling because I love hearing you talk so openly and your voice is working. So I'm just, praise Yay. God. <laughs> Number two, absolutely. Um, sometimes, you know, there's a time for everything. In Ecclesiastes, it talks about a time for highs and lows and ins and outs and war and peace. And right now, it just might be a time to kind of wait, you know, and just yeah. not not feel rushed to make an action. But um, what about this digital currencies? You know, most people have heard of Bitcoin, but they don't realize there's hundreds, if not th probably thousands of coins out there. And then now there's these new NFTs. Um, what do you think of digital currencies and NFTs and what impact has that had on your trading daily life? Look, the one that is the immediate thought bubble when you say what impact, the crypto bros, you know, mm -hmm. those guys that make those videos and they're just so handsome, aren't they? And oh, they speak in such a compelling way. It's so exciting. <laughs> oh my goodness. So those videos, I think, have perhaps painted an inaccurate picture about what traders are all about. It makes it look so exciting. It makes it look, hey, you know, diamond hands, hold on, even though it's going down and average down, man, it's so cool. It, it, all of this type of talk has no place in the professional traders realm. We are very careful with our risk management. We don't hang on to downtrending positions. We watch our position sizes very carefully. We risk manage by not betting the farm, not putting our housing at risk to be able to invest mm -hmm. in the stock market or in cryptos as the case may be all of these things that i'm saying sound very very boring i know i'm not a crypto bro oh, but they work <laughs> <laughs> they work. They've stood the test of time. Any professional investor will tell you that that hype, it's never going to last, that type of furor. So I do think we have been a little distorted as a society by listening to these very excited, enthusiastic players that probably have vested interest. So I think there is ding, definitely ding, a place. Ding, 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 yeah. ding. Ding, Amy, ding, I don't ding. even know your thoughts on this, so I'm, I'm barreling ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, it doesn't matter if we agree or disagree. It's, it's bringing yeah. our opinion out, hanging out, yep. being real, and we're just going to talk. And um, hopefully it just gives people content to think because there's always three options. Either you're right and I'm wrong, I'm right and you're wrong, or God's always right and we're both wrong and we need to figure out what the truth is. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm all about finding truth here, so don't worry about it. But no, um, 
yeah, you don't see the media in America and every country is so biased and controlled. And yeah. some, some countries are flat out. The government runs all of the media. So America, there's vested interest with people who are absolutely biased. And you don't hear, you mention mortgages because this is what you see every day. But there's people who went out and mortgaged their house to go to second mortgage because the crypto boom. And now, you know, it, poof, poof, it'll go up and down 400, 500, 1,000 percent. And these people don't understand and they're losing their homes. And that's yeah. never, I've never seen that on the news. But I know people who have lost so much money. Now I have three to five, I, I'd have to verify three to five friends have become millionaires off crypto. But that's three to five friends out of a lot of friends. So yeah. yes, there's those success stories and you can make money with crypto, but it is a fickle bitch and forgive me for cussing. But <laughs> I mean, to me, crypto is so fickle. And what you said is absolutely true there always seems like there's somebody manipulating the puppet. Um, I was even going to have, do you know who John McAfee is? I've heard the name. Yeah. McAfee antivirus. And then he got into a bunch yes, of crimes. Yes, yes, yes. I know who you mean. Yes. He, he was scheduled to be on our pod. Or he was going to be on our oh. podcast and I wanted to talk to him about God. And, you know, he clearly didn't live a life. I mean, he lived a wild life and um, long story short, I actually have messages between him and I on Twitter. I'm like, Hey man, is this going to happen before one of us dies? And then sure enough, the guy is killed. So it's, it's, um, it's pretty crazy, but he was one of the guys who would say, you know, it's a manipulation. He'd manipulate it. Other people manipulate it, but um, you just got to be careful. Now, even if it's being manipulated, if you can ride it up, jump on. But if you're the person on the rocket that ran out of fuel, you're screwed. There's even a conspiracy about is he dead or not? Yeah. I mean, he, I do believe he's dead because he, he was in, I mean, I don't know, but he. Yeah. But isn't it interesting though, that we're even to the point where we're questioning some of the basics. It, yeah. it, it is also a case that in terms of copy, writing copy, is that negative headlines sell. So mm -hmm. if you've got the news outlets being continually clicked upon for the negative headlines, that's what they're going to produce. They're going to produce more and more negativity rather than the positive things. You know, there's a lot of these success stories that you're talking about, but these people can be tempered with their views. So they're not sensational. So they don't get the news. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's just not a right system, but um, NFTs, that's another ah. one. What do you <laughs> think about those? Because <laughs> at our generation is like, what? You know, like what? Like, I know you can make money off them, but I just don't even want to bother. And, you know, maybe 18 other people are going to listen to this and go make millions. But I'm just like, I'm not saying you can't make money, but it just seems so freaking ridiculous to me. So again, yeah. any you can make money doing anything, but I don't want to make money that way. What are your thoughts on NFTs? Look, I am confused by the whole arena. Mm -hmm. It's deeply confusing to me. I think Keanu's response, Keanu Reeves' response was the funniest where he just laughed. <laughs> like you, you have to be kidding. So look, I think with any market, no matter what it is, is if you can read the laws of supply and demand and you can structure your thoughts around how to make money out of it, then there is, it's possible to make money out of it. You know, one time way before I had my AFSL, which is the Australian Financial Services Licence, it's a big fat deal over here, just take my word for it. You have to have degrees and you have to study and there's continuous professional development. So before I had that, and before I realised I shouldn't just tell people what to do with advice, I had this, two lovely men come to me and each three month mark they'd show me this chart and it was a hand-drawn chart right so I just thought they couldn't afford charting software I didn't know what it was <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'll, I'll analyze it if it's a chart I'll have a look it was a hand-drawn chart they showed it to me and they said is it a buy or a sell and back then I said it's a buy or it's a sell right and then years go past and their, their lifestyle upgrades substantially and I go over to their house and it's just like wow you guys are doing really really well I said How, how's the charting going do you think it's time to buy a charting package 
And they said, no, no, you can't, you can't chart this using a package. I said, what are we, what are we trading? And they told me taxi licenses. They were trading taxi licenses. No, this is before Uber. So to me, like they made a heap of money off my recommendations, <laughs> good for them. But they were buying and selling something that I didn't have any exposure to. I didn't even understand what it was. So if you can chart it and if you can track buying and selling styles of people, mm -hmm. then you can make money out of it. So if you can do that with any instrument, you can make money out of it. Just make sure you're following a trading plan. Make sure you have detailed prior to getting into a trade, your entry, your exit, and your position sizing, no matter what it is you're trading, no matter what market around the world. Because if you don't have those three things in place, I guarantee your income from that source will be short lived. Uh, well said, well said. And um, yeah, and I think, was it Warren Buffett? He said, never trade anything you don't understand. Is uh, that... See, I disagree with that. No, I, no, no, yeah, I'm not it, saying it's, it's probably... true, but he's, he, I think, yeah. is he the one that said that? He and might I, have said that, yeah. yeah see, I, I, don't do, I don't know NFTs. about that. Well, I don't yeah. understand NFTs. So for me, that holds yes. true there, but I don't need to understand like AIG. Have you heard of that American gene yeah. technology? Um, they're, they're coming up with a cure for HIV. Well, I don't understand yeah. what they're doing, but I sure had heck invested. You know what I mean? It was like, That's I saw it. the opportunity yeah. and jumped in. So yeah, but what your thoughts on the blanket statement, don't invest in what you don't understand. You disagree. So that's good. Yeah. Look, the majority of companies that I'm investing in, I have no idea what they do. I don't even know their full name. I usually only know their little code, their stock code. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as you've got something that you can base your decisions on. So I follow technical analysis, which is looking at data, open, high, low, close data and volume data. I look at that on a chart and I've got specific entry and specific exit triggers to get me in and out of it. And that is really all I need to make money. That with careful money management, this can keep you going forever. You know, I had a client of mine, Ted, he was 98 when he died. He was a full-time trader for the last 12 years of his life. He was fantastic. So he just traded everything that he could get his head around, had a systematic approach, got himself off welfare because, you know, who wants to be on welfare at any time? If you can possibly get off it, you probably want to. And I just thought that was just a tribute to see somebody with such ambition heading towards 100 and still finding joy out of the stock market. So it gave me a lot of hope and I want to be that 98 year old lady with trades in the market. <laughs> nice. Now, let me ask you a question then. For our listeners, there's some people who are on welfare listening. There's some people yeah. who could support welfare <laughs> financially. Um, how do you get started with trading? Like, you know, it's like any other hobby, but this one can be very profitable. How do you get started with trading? Yeah, number one is save. You have to save some money to get going. Unfortunately, it's a parallel here with life that you know how when you're doing well in life, more seems to be given to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that saving principle to be able to get to say the 5,000 US mark, 10,000 US mark is pretty mandatory. If you're going in with less than that, when you're starting, you'll get chewed up by brokerage and you're not giving yourself enough scope for learning. You need some time to learn this. So to get started while you're saving, definitely read some good books. So the books are the cheapest way. You can get them from a library. You know, there's these big buildings that give you books for free. Yeah. yeah. They're still there. <laughs> They're still there in most countries, but that doesn't mean they will always be no. So, you know, frequent, frequent, go and explore, get some trading books, find some good books on technical analysis. My book, Trading Secrets, would be fantastic to get you started. Follow that up with Charting Secrets. Those two are my top selling books. And that basis, that education that you're getting while you're saving will save you so much money in the long run. Then start paper trading. A lot of places have demo accounts. A lot of platforms that you can use have like a little 
pretend money that you can play with and mm -hmm. you can put your trades on as if you were trading real money. So kick off that way, start small. You don't have to, you know, hey, I'm a full-time trader now, look at me go. Get rid of all of that ego. <laughs> Just aim to get yourself immersed in the environment and grow to love it. You know, even after all of these years, I've been trading for longer than 30 years now. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 but I'm still learning. I am still learning. I still find new things all the time. I find things about myself all the time. I sometimes surprise myself. <laughs> So it's a good thing. I think you have to stay humble with it and then just realize you're always the eternal student. Yeah, that's great. Eternal student, always learning. When we're done learning, God will take us home, right? Yeah, that's it. So expectations. You have people who are, you know, average traders. You have people who are good traders. And you have people who are elite. You know, they're just yes. fantastic. If someone took $10,000 and we're talking US, I think Australia, what's the currency trend, uh, the conversion rate right now? Yeah, One come over here or... and spend your money. <laughs> yeah, what, what I is think it? you do pretty well. I don't even know at the moment. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I wasn't sure what it was. Yeah. It was like, I know in England, I just looked at Great Britain, it was like almost 1.3 to our dollar. So like, yeah. if somebody gave you $15, it's like 20 almost. So, um totally distracted my own self sorry about that <laughs> that's okay so you, have you can talk about the elite traders average yeah. good and elite somebody takes ten thousand dollars and they're an average trader what does that realistically look like after a year after three years after five years yeah well look after one year your goal should be to break even which means to still have your ten thousand dollars now i know that doesn't sound inspiring does it david nope but that's the why <laughs> cryptocurrency gets people hooked like a thousand percent in one day. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I think the thing is that your first year needs to be education based. So every trade can teach you something. The trades where you follow your trading plan, they are good trades, regardless of whether you make a win or a loss, because it will be teaching you things and making small modifications as you go. So I always suggest get a solid written trading plan, do 20 trades without variation, don't change your plan at all, and then review. Find somebody who knows what they're doing, find a mentor, and go through the areas that you can improve because you need your own personal data to be able to make improvements. Now, after that first year, year two and three, then you're starting to get your pace, you, you understand what's going on. And really from year three to five, then you're looking to say, all right, then I'm gonna probably trade one, two, three markets around the world or types of markets, like you choose equities, like just normal shares. You could choose commodities, for example, and that would be two types of markets. You could choose two time frames. You could choose weekly charts and daily charts. That will give you enough choice. Two or three markets, one or two time frames within year three to five. And you can work out whether you actually need to say yes to that demanding boss. You can actually say no to people now because you have choices. And that's when your world opens up. That's the fun part for me. When my traders start making money and they realize they're creating money out of thin air and they can say no to that over time that their boss wants them to do, they can say no to that overseas project so that they don't really want to drag their kids out of school here to go and pursue. That is where it gets really fun. So hang on in there, educate yourself. Three to five years later, you'll know what sort of trader you are. Now I'm going to throw it in America. Now there's different regions for sure, but yeah. let's just say a hundred thousand dollars a year in most of America, a hundred thousand dollars a year is a good living. Now, if you're yeah. living in, you know, California or New York, you're struggling. But in most of America, that would be a, a good living. Not rich, not poor, comfortable, not really having any financial worries. For someone, the average person to take your class, start learning, start becoming the expert. When do you think the transition would be from that initial $10,000 to their generating full-time training, a hundred thousand years, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or more a year. And again, of course you can't predict the future. I'm just saying the average person, what you've seen over the 30 years, 
Yeah. It, it, it's impossible to say. We've had the, some people start with $15,000 Australian. Um, they ended up doing beautifully and then finished their job after three years. We've had other people who couldn't follow instructions. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> real. That is a real problem. <laughs> and struggle. We've had people who've got so distracted that they've had to really self-talk themselves down off this ledge of busyness and trading just wasn't a priority. So it's a very difficult question to answer. And that starting point of $10,000, I want to encourage you to actually invest more than that when you're kicking off. The people who start with 25000 50000 75000 they actually have a little bit more meat there so that they don't get churned through with brokerage and they can make some mistakes. So the less money that you have, the more specific you have to be and the more you have to focus on your own trading education. Otherwise, you just don't have the meat to be able to give back. So the more you've got to invest, the better. And find ways of being able to get yourself up to that level. Hang out with people who are elite performers. Write emails to people who you admire. Get yourself out of your comfort zone. Listening to this type of recording, the work that you are doing, David, the people that you are inspiring, what a brilliant, brilliant line to be able to inspire and encourage people. You need to fill your brain up with good so that all of the things that are going to eke away at you are going to just be banished over time. Yes. And if somebody's listening, what Louise is saying, being an eternal student, man, please be. Because if you look at the people who are super, super good at what they do, and they don't even really think about the money, it just flows to them. It's because they truly love what they're doing. And they're passionate about becoming the expert and they learn everything they can. They don't stop learning. So I couldn't agree with you more, Louise. And if you're listening to this and you're like, oh man, that's a lot of work, then stop talking about the dream if you don't want to put the work in to make it a reality. Really save yourself some time, save your family frustration listening to you. Either, oh, I'm, there's a bad American term, but basically take action or stop talking about it. The talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. That's what the Bible says. So if they wanted to start, or if you want to start, not like shameful promotion, but shameless, Louise and Chris are great resources. Louise, how can they reach out to you or connect with you and get into your class? Yeah, come to Trading Game, G-A-M-E, tradinggame.com.au, AU for Australia, tradinggame.com.au. Register your details on my website. There's a little registration box. I'll send you my trading plan template and also a five-part e-course. And it's called Trading Made Simple. It'll give you the basics about trading and you'll just love it. Just tying back into something else that you said there, David, the other thing that I think you do exceptionally well is that you have a spirit of giving. You know, a lot of people in the share market, and I'm going to, I'm going to say even in society, are looking to see what they can take. And that actually is the opposite of a spirit of abundance. What I'm loving about seeing you over the years, because you waited a year and a half before I could speak for our very first interview. <laughs> and we stayed in touch all that time. In that time, you made me feel so cherished and so cared for. You have that spirit of giving. And I do want to encourage everybody listening to duplicate that because you never know when that spirit of giving will actually end up with you receiving more than you ever thought possible. So that's one of the reasons why I do give away so much information for free, why I do try to start people professionally, why I give away my leading resource, that trading plan template. I used to sell that for $99 on my website. I'm giving it to you for free. And that e-course that five-part e-course by registering on tradinggame.com.au that being able to give allows me to receive from the markets i think there is a reciprocal type of universal law here i don't understand it fully maybe you can explain it more to me david but you know exactly what i mean don't you 100 percent. the summary there's so many verses old testament and new testament in the bible um you hear people talk 
about the law of attraction, the secret. They talk about all these different terms, but the Bible just says you reap what you sow. Boom, done. If you're, <laughs> if you give out good, you bring back good. You know, if you, if you give out bad, you're going to reap bad. And people can say, well, oh yeah, look at this person. They're a liar and they're a thief. Yeah, that's true. And they may look like they're doing well but number one you don't know what goes on behind closed doors number two they might be rich but that doesn't mean they have wealth and number three even if they have a amazing quote-unquote life on this earth for uh, 80 years they're screwed when they meet the creator so don't worry about anybody but yourself you know that, that's what you gotta do and but like louis said help as many people as you can because you'd want somebody to help you so that's the way to do it now one thing I want to clarify, because this is a newer podcast, and the Remarkable People podcast, we've been in over 100 countries, but we're actively in over 50 countries. So people might be listening to this podcast from the Remarkable People podcast from all over the world. So my question to you, Louise, is this, is what you're teaching in your class only good for Australians? Or does it work for anybody? Could they be from Spain? Could they be from Kuwait? Could they be from Canada? Is it a universal class or is it only for Australia? We have people from all around the world. We yeah. have so many people who come to us from overseas and when they can come to Australia, it's like they're the prodigal child returning. We're so excited to see them. So you <laughs> always have a friend in Australia when you get involved from overseas. But some of our best traders are from the States. We've got some amazing traders in the UK. We've even got a few in actually Middle Eastern countries as well. So they're trying to find ways to accommodate within their own laws and what they can do. I think a lot of this is mindset also, that if you can get into the mindset that you are deserving of wealth, that you actually have the skills within you to be able to create money out of the stock market, that has a ripple effect into every area of your life. If you are feeling truly worthy, then you get more respect from your peers, you demand more from your employer, you create more and you create opportunities for those that you love to a greater extent. So it's a bigger situation than just making money out of the stock market. It's, it's never as simple as something with such a small vision. The vision that I want you and all of everybody listening to have is that you are worth more and you can do more than you possibly realize at the moment. So immerse yourself with people like David, with the right books, with the right resources, expand your mind and then go out there and get it. Amen to that. And another question I have for you, because people are going to be really thinking about this, and this might be the episode that they hear you and they finally pull the trigger in their life to make a positive change. What kind of, we talked about that first year, we talked about for the average person, the expectation is just to break even that first year because it's a lot of learning, right? What kind of time commitment would you say the average trader should spend the first year to become, you know, competent? Yeah, look, I think we need to separate things out between education and actual trading. Okay, so the education part, I don't even know, like, I was just like, so crazy fascinated with it. Like when I finally realized what this could mean for me and for my family, I just read everything I could get my hands on. So I can't actually tell you, you know, commit this much time. If you come and do my course, I can give you an idea, because that is the shortcut. So most people are putting in between half an hour to an hour each day for education. And then once they're through that six months, 12 months where they're starting out, then with trading, some people just trade for half an hour a week. I mean, that's really, for some people, all they want to do. If you've got a very demanding role in your employment situation, you don't want to be trading every day. You don't want to be sitting in front of a screen. Mm. Other people want to trade daily. So they might look at the computer maybe twice a day for 20 minutes each time um, that is also acceptable so it depends on what you want to do 
You know, to me, the majority of the money comes into my household through that medium to longer term approach. Mm. I don't day trade. I don't like short term trading now that I've got my children and they take up so much time, the little lovelies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look at the markets all that often. I've got alerts set when things go beyond certain parameters, certain boundaries. I've got automatic stop losses so that I'm taken out of positions when things turn nasty. I look at my portfolio on a Sunday. Um, I spend between half an hour and an hour entering in, you know, details into an Excel spreadsheet, all the usual <laughs> stuff that you have to do to keep track of a business. Um, the trading itself is very minimal. It's half an hour on a Monday and everything else is set up automatically. So once you've got that initial education into your system, you know what you're doing and you're more comfortable being able to take those steps you can trade for half an hour a week and still make as good side income like your income on the side in inverted commas will probably end up being more than you're making through your job if you do this right that's what you can expect that's fantastic so what we'll do is we'll put a link in the show notes to your courses and the books and we'll make sure that people can reach out to you and get a hold of you. Um, but if you're listening, maybe this is the time to just take the plunge. And it can be fun, not just scary. Um, I remember, you know, I like when I like something, I'll pour in a bunch of time and it's fun to me. It's not work. And if you start investing with Louise, it might just be like, this is fantastic. And you don't even look at it as work. So it's something you enjoy. So it can be a profitable hobby. I mean, like Louise said, it could turn into a full-time career. So at least research it, look into it, try it, see what happens. And if you hate it, go garden or do something else. But I mean, <laughs> at least try it. I mean, it's not going to, I mean, I guess it could hurt because it's only money. You can make more money back. I mean, money comes and goes. It's always moving. Um, well, Louise, it's been awesome catching up with you. We got a little bit of personal, a little bit of political, a little bit of uh, socioeconomical. We got business in here. Anything else you want to talk about or any questions you have, anything you want to catch up on or any final words for the listeners? I want to know what inspires you, David. You are an inspiration to so many. How do you fill your tank? What gets you going to the point where you can give more? That's a great question because you can only give what you have. And if you don't have it, you get exhausted. And I was there for years. Um, so I have a strong, I believe completely in God. And I believe that this is a short like speck of sand on a speck of sand of our life of 80 years average. And then eternity is forever. So I don't want to be, a. and this is, hold on, I'm, I'm making like an illustration. This isn't real, but I don't want to be a janitor when I get to eternity, when I have the opportunity to be, you know, a high level executive. So my purpose here is to help everybody I can come to know God, help them grow. And not just for my personal benefit in the future, but so we can all benefit together. There's endless resources on earth and there's endless resources in eternity. So I want us all to be as profitable and as wealthy as we can, full of joy and love and peace on this earth and in eternity moreover. So that's kind of what motivates me each day. It's like, I didn't have, um, I grew up very poor for most countries. Like I wasn't sleeping on the ground outside, but we had six foot ceilings. The house was made from wood, from houses that burned down, you know, in the neighborhood. And when it rained, you know, water would come in and you know it'd be freaking rats or mice in the attic so it wasn't like i had a, a, a an opulent life and i never really i didn't have a father and i didn't have resources to learn and everybody was kind of like you're a loser you're gonna be a loser that's all you'll ever be so what really motivates me is just like that's all a lie that's not true so and if it's not true for me it's not true for you it's not true for anybody we can be whatever God allows us to be, and he only wants blessings for us. That doesn't mean everybody's going to be a millionaire, but you can be poor and sick and still have joy and peace. So that's kind of what motivates me, just to have the best life I can have, help everybody have the best life they can have, and we can all enjoy not just life here, but eternity. Does that answer your question? Or was that a really long statement? No, I 
damn well love it. And you know what? You are walking the walk because when I know I was at my lowest and you knew it too, you were there for me, my friend. Oh, we're there. there. We're here to help each other, though. That's what it's all about. So how many of us have been betrayed, right? You know, you think you have a friend and then times get rough and they betray you. They leave you. That's just not only painful, but infuriating. But then you have people who you don't know growing up or you don't even know that well, but they're there and they're the one picking you up off the ground when you're bloody. Right. So yep. me and you, God just brought us together and we had the ability. Hopefully we help each other and sharpen each other for the rest of life. Yeah, it's good. My business partner, Chris Tate, said to me once, if you were standing at the gates of hell, who are the people you would want to link arms with? Yeah, to keep out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good, hey. Yeah, yeah. man. It's all about, and Chris is a fighter too, so I like his mentality. Yeah. <laughs> He's always an aggressive. Like he has the same mindset I do. Like if eight guys attack me, that's fine. I'm going after the Yeah, it's person. like... <laughs> I'm dying. Make swinging. your stand. Make yeah. your stand at the gates, my friend. Yeah. I had, I had somebody in, um, I don't remember when it was a couple years ago. I was at a gas station. It was like midnight and I got surrounded by like 12 people and I just ignored what was going on. They were blocking my car in and I drove around them. And then this dude's like, get out of your car and pointed to me. And there was just enough space between like the cars blocking me in. And they were only going to, I don't know what they're going to do, rob me, beat me up. It was during very, very much unrest in America. I was just at a gas station and they surrounded me. And this dude's like, get out of your car. And I waved at him, hit the gas and drove right for him. He jumped out of the way like he was in war. And I just kept going. I didn't care if I hit him. I didn't care if I hit the other cars. I love people, but I also love my family. And I'm going home yes. to my family. And if you're going to stand in the way of me and my family, I'm going to hit you with the car. And then I'm going to hit you with my fist. And then if you kill me, at least I took out as many as I can on the way. So that might not be the right approach to life, but that's where I'm at. Some people may be super spiritual and tell them about Jesus while they're stabbing them, but I wasn't there at that point or right now. So I'm just being real. <laughs> So, but Chris, I'm glad you me made it out, my friend. You've got a lot of more good to do in the world for the compared oh. to being over at that moment. Well, thank oh, you. But, gosh. but all right, for anything else you want to share? Any closing thoughts? No, I'm good. You keep spreading your magic into the world, David. You are a charming individual. You put a smile on my face whenever I get in touch with you. It's wonderful. Well, thank you very much. And to our listeners, we love you. Thanks for being here today and hanging out with Louise and I. Please, whether it's trading or something else, find your passion, pour yourself into it. And when you look at back at life, you know, like a, a fighter will say, I left it all in the ring. Man, leave everything in the ring of life so you can go to eternity and be, be uh, not ashamed when we see God. So that's it. I'm David Pasquale. This is Louise Bedford. We will see you in the next episode. Ciao.